Stopper going, bye bye bye, here we go. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay, let's do a little experiment, hey? Um, uh, what? Uh, a couple of things have come into my possession. I've I've had them. Uh, one of them, the uh, monstrous blowtorch down here. I've had that thing a little while. Um, they come with a bunch of other tools that I wanted, and you know. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. All right. Um, I think it's old, uh, like World War Two. It's got a little ministry arrow on it or something. Um, and then uh, I've got a, um, a weed torch. Yeah, that that thing's for for doing the weeding around uh, around your garden. Uh, that was introduced to me by uh, Sam and Mary's Outdoors. Um, you know, you, you just walk around your garden and you weeds basically, or your estate, I suppose. But I've got a problem with Japanese knotweed, isn't it? Like it's come from the railway line over over into my garden and like that thing uh you know, that thing really does uh take care of it pretty quickly. Either way, what I wanna do, yeah, is um have a little investigation as to how good kerosene is for use in a foundry. So the uh, the first melt we're going to try is all the um, all the copper out of the transformer in a microwave. Now go in there. Um, what else have we got? We've got the, uh, the motor out of the microwave. The motor that um, spins a little table, the roundy, roundy motor. And I've taken all the. I've managed to slip it off, slip off its little plastic prison. So that's only a little fine wire. There's not much copper there. I mean, you know, there's a little bit, but it's they're fine. And um, and then what? A little bit of copper pipe. And uh, what? I've got some some cut up sheet that was off cut some. Uh, an old um an old uh water tank that I cut up to turn into something else. Something naughty. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it, that's in it. This this blowtorch is missing a few parts. Um the uh it should have a little tray underneath it. So you can squirt a little bit of paraffin out of it into the tray and the, and and set that on fire, and that will heat the coil up uh, to a point where any subsequent paraffin coming through the blowtorch will vaporise. But obviously, without the tray, um, uh, what? Well, I'm just going to use a blowtorch because it's a. Uh, I'm going to use a gas blowtorch. Funny enough, this um, is well, it's, it's not like I'm going to use it seriously. I, I just want to know the jet size and about the coil, really, so that when I make my own, I, I can make it all the right size first time, rather than rather than doing too much. Um, well, this is the experimentation phase, isn't it? Eh? This is R&D, folks. So we'll just get that hot. I might give it a little bit of a squirt. I
wheels come off the pump and left the innards of the pump inside the pump housing. Could be better. <laughs> We're not metalled yet. I put an extra tank of fuel in here. Uh, I never filled it up. Total, I've put about a litre in. Or uh, a quart, if you like. Um, we're nearly melted, I can see the metal slumping but I, I, think there's, I think there's melted metal at the bottom, we're not there yet. Um, Okay, so we got the the big Sheen uh, 300 set up. Um, we're going to try and melt some metal with this one. We have to do. Um, it's the same as the other one. Let's give it a couple of pumps. This has actually got a wick. Just uh, down there. We've got to squirt a little bit of fuel onto the wick. Come on. So one important side of this experiment is to is to determine like how much smoke we're going to get in the shed. So this is the smokiest part part of the <laughs> of the whole procedure, isn't it? The start up because we're not getting a very clean burn. Um, but I'm hoping hoping as it heats up, uh, you know, we'll get a more complete burn and. Um, <laughs> this thing's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a flame there, isn't it? A little wee, wee bit of a wee bit of a flame.
of it. Stop it. Okay, I don't think we've actually got a complete melt here, yeah? Um, I kind of feel like for this to work, we need forced air to give it a little bit of a little bit of a hotter burn. I mean, it should be possible um, if you can do it with a waste engine oil, you should be able to do it with kerosene. But either way, we'll have a look. We'll have a look. Um, okay, so it's been uh, it's kind of been in the same state for about five minutes now. Um, it got it started melting after five minutes. I added a load more metal. Um, so I mean it took another five minutes for that to get molten again and then it stood for another it's it's been at it for another five minutes since then, yeah. Uh, but what I'm noticing is it just it just doesn't it's not doing anything more now and I can feel I can feel bits that aren't melted, sort of it's crusty. It's crusty. Um I might get some eye protection, you know, treat myself. This brick's good. I'm impressed with this brick. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's an especially hot one. It's still putting out a lot of heat. I should probably have sleeves on for this, shouldn't I? You know, that'd be sensible, wouldn't it? Let's have a bit of rum instead. Buckles. Okay. <laughs> what have I actually done here? This is good. This is uh, all about experimenting, isn't it, eh? Um, and for an experiment to be successful, no, for an experiment to be worthwhile, it doesn't have to be successful. This wasn't, eh? So this wasn't a successful experiment, but it was very, very much worthwhile, and that's the whole point of doing experiments, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, I think what I've determined from this is this, uh, this big flame gun, yeah, uh, got it up. To the temperature that it maintained very quickly so um, it's not a case of having insufficient um, jet size or anything like that it's, it's merely that you know this this form of fuel is going to need forced uh, forced air if we want to melt brass and copper the coupe pro um, coupe pro alloys and whatnot yeah i think some of them do melt a bit lower but i, I don't know which ones i think you know copper's sort of which would make sense, you know, if it's alloyed with aluminium, then you'd expect it to melt a bit of a lower temperature, wouldn't you? Um, so the lump of stuff that we pulled off, uh, I don't know what that is. So, uh, you know, we have melted the copper. Unfortunately, the crucible's still, still roasty-toasty, so um, I'm not going to go digging around in there right at the minute. So that, that's sort of amalgamated together, but it never melted properly. Um, I think it might have melted a little bit, whatever. Um, you know, this thing had been it, it had been sat like that for five minutes. I don't think it's it's going to melt. Um, just not quite there, not quite there, folks. But that's okay, that's okay. Uh, so what we did melt uh, some random old crap. I mean, this would be okay for Ali. You could definitely melt Ali with this. Absolutely easy peasy any day of the week. If we're getting near the melting point of copper, I mean that's pretty much double melting point of Ali. So. Um, yeah, you can you can easily do. I mean, you'd you'd melt that beaker full of aluminium in five minutes flat. I would have thought, you know. Um, any who's any who? Yeah, we got uh, <laughs> we got uh, the beaker stuck with copper in it at the minute. So that'll have to wait till the next experiment. When um, what well, I don't know what we'll do. I, I I'm thinking this uh, this flame gun isn't much use as a weed killer during the winter months. So. I could I could just use it, just this side of it, and make another burner, which actually has a some way of taking forced air from behind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's have a look at that bit of metal that um that came out the back anyway. Out the back. Those are obsessed lads. 
Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's a there's there's a fair bit of weight on that, so that is that's definitely not just. Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is? There is actually. Yeah, you can see the change in colour there. It's like a bit of um. I think there is. I think there, there must be copper in this. I mean, I'd expect if there was a lot of solder in those bits and bobs um, that I put in there then the lead would cook off and I've inhaled that so that's probably taken five years off my life uh, the tin's going to hang around a bit longer but um, yeah, it's, uh, there's some weight there there's some weight, let me drop it so you can hear it okay. let's do this scientifically so you get an idea of how heavy it is oh! and it's brittle what have I created? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've just uh, just invented the shittest alloy ever. Uh, what what have I created? It just breaks apart like glass. What what is this? There's obviously two things in here that don't like being mixed, or whatever this is only just melted. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. Well, if anyone's uh, got any suggestions, I, I, I threw electrical waste and bits of central heating tank in there. Central heating tank had quite a lot of solder on it. Um, other than that, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, folks. Let me know what uh, what useless wonder material I've just created. And uh, if anyone else has got any suggestions about... Um, you know, experimental foundry work, then uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm always up for trying new things. Um, if not, then, uh, you know, I guess next time I do any experimental foundry work, it will be with fucking trains. I don't I, this thing's so loud, and I've been sat with this for the last 20 minutes, that, um, what, well, I suppose I'll just talk up. Yeah, I, the next time we'll do some experimental foundry work with a forced air kerosene foundry experiment all right okay until then folks well i know i mean i'm sure i'll have other stuff before then we're in the middle of building a crane aren't we but um but yeah anyway i take it easy folks i'll see you later bye bye